the news this week, Intel, kids, Papa's here. Also, NVIDIA Supercards. This morning I said, this is too much, and now I realize it's too much. And some AMD news. Who's looking forward to Starfield? There's a ton to talk about this week, so we'll be recapping some of the APU behaviors as fast as possible for you in case you didn't catch the full 35-minute deep dive on what they were doing. We'll also be going over the new ASUS ROG Ally 2 statements coming from ASUS officially, actually, so that is on the roadmap and they're talking about it already. Uh, additionally, the RTX 3050 6 gigabyte spotted at retail now. It's an actual thing. 7900 XT GPU is plummeting in price and a couple more stories. Before that, this video is brought to you by ID Cooling and the Frozen A620 series air coolers. The Frozen A620 coolers use a dual tower, dual fan design and come in both ARGB and non-RGB variants. ID Cooling has remained largely value focused while keeping performance as good as possible for the price. This is something we talked about with the 216 previously. Check out the A620 for a dual tower cooler for your mid-range gaming PCs at the link in the description below. First up, the AMD APU changes. So AMD just launched its new 8000G series APUs. We reviewed them on the channel and they are already making some fairly significant but we think important changes to them. And in fact, the behavior that we found in the reviews process for the APUs was bizarre enough that we introduced a whole new GN store coupon code for it, which is STAP for 10% off. Uh, but the reason for all of that, the review included a discovery and discussion of some power gating behavior that we were seeing, but it's not normal power gating. Typically, when you power gate a desktop CPU to throttle it down, it's from one of a couple of options. Either there's thermal throttling, uh, there's also something like PPT or uh, EDC throttling, and or just power package throttling, or time-based throttling, where it's a predictable set amount of time, like old Intel Tau, like 56 seconds or whatever it was. So those are the common ways to control desktop CPU, either thermals or power, depending on what they're trying to do. But what is not common is doing it by skin temperature awareness, because you don't touch or hold the desktop while you're using it, normally. And if you do, I apologize for assuming how you use your desktop. Your, your, your desk top, not laptop. So staff is a little different. It calculates a number in watts, but it's not actually measuring power in watts. Uh, in fact, it's sort of an accumulated value a calculation over time where it'll start at whatever, 20 watts or something, but the CPU is drawing 80 to 88 in that time for the APUs. So that number, the 20 watts, doesn't mean it's drawing 20 watts. It is an additive value. And over the period of whatever you're doing, like rendering something, playing a game, it will accumulate until it hits the limit, which is 65 watts on the APUs. But that's not 65 watts of actual power. That's 65 watts of the accumulated staff value. Because again, if you stop playing the game, say go through a loading screen that's low load for 10 seconds, that number will drop and then it'll start climbing again and it can be below what the CPU's actual power consumption is. So that's kind of the confusing part. The mechanism really only makes sense for mobile devices or handhelds like the ROG Ally. Uh, it's completely unpredictable and, and unreliable in a sense as to when it will throttle. So it's not as clean as 95 degrees Celsius or 88 watts for 56 seconds. Uh, it's a little less clear than that because of how it works. And for desktop, if it is the throttle at all, it's normally based on one of those other metrics I've already mentioned. Uh, so because skin temperature is not a consideration for a desktop PC, we contacted AMD about this behavior and a number of uh, BIOS issues that we were running into. And we we're hoping to get some clarity on it. What we got instead was a little bit better, which is that AMD said, quote, we found out that Staphem is being incorrectly applied to the desktop parts. It shouldn't be applied to the desktop parts. A future BIOS update should correct this behavior. If nothing else, you caught something that's going to help a lot of customers. Better catch it sooner than later. Thanks for finding this. So that's the fastest recap we can do. If you want more information, it is actually kind of a fascinating story. It's in the APU reviews. Uh, so even if you're not interested in the parts, maybe watch the first 15, 16 minutes of that and you'll get that whole part of the story if you want to learn about this um, and then you don't need to, to watch all the gaming charts and things. But that's up on the channel and this in particular, this change will affect performance in applications that are heavy load, especially for extended periods. So you play certain games. I was talking to Wendell from Level 1 Techs actually during the reviews process, um, which technically I don't think we're supposed to tell each other that we have the device. but. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so I was talking to him before the launch, and um, he noted some peculiar behavior after playing Stellaris for an extended period of time. I think it was about an hour. And that aligned pretty well with what we were seeing in the staff and power throttling, where uh, he may have been encountering some hard frequency drops that were causing that. 
because of that uh, behavior. So anyway, they're changing that. We saw the largest change we saw was 16 to 17 percent time reduction between full staffum and no staffum, which is like a skin temperature aware power management on the APU in Blender. Uh, versus the lowest we saw was 0% change. And that 0% was in some of the games. Anyway, we debuted a coupon code STAP on store.cameransexus.net for 10% off anything on the store right now. And that's because it took me about 40 hours of work between Saturday and Sunday uh, to finalize all the testing and try to get the review live. And we still ended up holding the, the review just to make sure we really understood the behavior. You know, one of the things you want to identify in the reviews process is like where does the fault land? Is it ASRock with their weird, screwy, messed up BIOS that we had, or is it AMD? And in this case, it's a little bit of a little bit of both. Uh, why not both? So anyway, if you want to support our efforts, our ability to work on reviews to the depth that we think is uh, adequate for this, you know, this type of launch, this type of behavior, then you can go to the store. We'd greatly appreciate the support by grabbing something with the code STAP. You can grab one of our silicone soldering and project mats. These have been wildly popular lately, and they're great for all kinds of projects, including model building, crafting, uh, working with things like paints and glues, or just soldering. And they also help keep your workspace clean and organized with tool holders and easily clean surface. Our brand new PC component mouse mat is full length and on the store for your mouse and keyboard. Features a yellow and blue design with a vibrant yellow underside and blue border stitching and tiny components on the print. So that was the APU story. It was fun to work on, really uh, enjoyed it actually. Well, I mean, it was, it was torturous at times, but the end result was pretty cool. Uh, so support directly helps us when we uh, decide to halt our content to fully research something. And otherwise, let's move on to the next story. Asus just confirmed a successor to the ROG Ally. Uh, they also gave some sales numbers for it in at least one region. So uh, Asus, of course, the ROG Ally is a handheld gaming PC. It came out last year, if you want to call it a PC. I guess it's more or less accurate. It's a handheld gaming Windows device. And uh, now they are looking forward to a second one sometime in 2024, it sounds like. So similarly to the info on the successors to MSI's Claw, a handheld that's not even out yet, this Ally 2 news came as an offhand comment in an interview. Asus India's Vice President of Consumer and Gaming PCs, Arnold Su, said this to Techlusive in part of a broader conversation. Quote, we most likely will launch a second generation handheld gaming console this year. We will still keep the Windows features, but we'll focus more on gaming. We're not sure what exactly to read from that Windows part of the comment. It'll either have Windows or it won't. And while Asus can customize things like power plans, it seems something maybe got lost in translation or detail here. That aside, it's interesting to think about the ways in which an Ally 2 could increase the focus on gaming as it's already a gaming only device, basically. The form factor, the controller inputs, pretty much dedicated to gaming already. Maybe he just meant it'll be more powerful and therefore better at running games. But either way, uh, Sue mentioned that the Ally sold somewhere between 70 and 80,000 units. That's 70,000, not 70. <laughs> Very wide range otherwise. Uh, specifically in the India market, which puts revenue for the first gen handheld in that market alone easily into the tens of millions. And it's clear that this segment is something that the gaming market is interested in and is buying into with things like the Ally, uh, MSI has gotten into it, Lenovo, obviously Valve kind of, they didn't start all this, but they kicked it back off, uh, and everyone's jumping into it. So as a final note regarding gaming laptop sales outpacing that of desktops in India and uh, globally, Sue had a comment unrelated to Ally, but interesting, which was simply already outpaced. The hardcore gamers, they still prefer desktops. That in particular isn't crazy news. It tends to be the case that laptops have outperformed desktop sales globally for, a, well, at least for some segments, for a while now. Uh, but we do like to think of ourselves as hardcore gamers. Very elite. It's, it's a... I guess it's an old reference now. Up next, following leaks, NVIDIA published official specs for its new entry-level RTX 3050 6 gigabyte GPU. So it's real now, maybe unfortunately. Versus the original 8 gigabyte version of the 3050, this one is cut down in more ways than just the lower VRAM capacity that the name implies. It has 2304 CUDA cores, a boost clock of 1.47 gigahertz, which is lower than even the base clock of the original, it has 6 gigabytes of G6 memory on a 96-bit tiny bus, and it's a 70-watt TGP. But either way, that's the same amount of cores as the cut-down OEM-only variant of the 3058 gigabyte, but at a lower frequency. 
These changes are likely necessary to hit that lower power target so that it can run from the PCIe slot alone without an additional 6-pin. One previous leak showed the new GPU as having fewer CUDA cores at higher clocks and power budget, but none of the currently announced 3050 6GB cards officially line up with that particular set of specs. The most interesting one we've seen so far is the Palet Comx, Comx with a K, which has an entirely passive cooler and brings back the DVI port. We thought it was dead. Up next, in our RTX 4080 Super Review, we had a chance to look around at GPU prices again. We experimented with some new value charts, uh, cost per frame, things like that, and simplified percent scaling comparisons between AMD, XTX, XT, and NVIDIA GPUs. And uh, we mostly focused on that $900 to $1,000 range, 700 XTX competition now. But looking at retailers afterward, we noticed that the RX 7900 XT non-second X has now also fallen again, again. ASRock's Phantom Gaming model is now $730 online. We'll link that below. And it matches the price at which we revisited the 7900 XT last year. If you want to see what we thought of the XT then at this price, you can check that video out. We'll also link it below. It looks like some of AMD's recent promotional price drops may have become permanent in the face of the Super Series, so the cards did something after all. As for all the reviews, we found them awesome to work on, actually, because in spite of whatever we said about each card, like the 4080 Super being lame, uh, they were an excellent opportunity to try and debut a bunch of new, pilot a bunch of new testing options. We'll talk about that last week at length in the news episode if you want to learn more. But uh, the most recent one, we brought in the value charts, the cost per frame metric, cost per FPS, and some relative scaling. Had a good discussion about that in the review, so you should check it out if you're interested. Also did the frames per joule charts and latency. So good opportunity to do that. It was fun working on them because, uh, you know, the options are kind of append card to chart and talk about it, move on, or try to do something kind of new and different with each review as an opportunity to explore uh, new ways we can do data presentation and analysis of cards. So that's what we took the opportunity for, and hopefully it helps some people make some decisions along the way as these cards uh, launched and were available on day one. AMD, meanwhile, is doing what AMD does, which is drop the price in reaction to things. Uh, it's kind of acts in a panicked way sometimes, but it works out for all of us. So if you're not planning to go heavy into RT specifically, like in Cyberpunk with RT, then something like the 700 XT remains a strong consideration for uh, probably the vast majority of gaming scenarios, at least outside of RT workloads, and we talk about that in the other coverage if you want to learn more. Okay, next one. Intel makes some bold claims with its upcoming AI processing capabilities. Thank you, Papa. During a recent Intel earnings call, CEO Pat Gelsinger uh, claimed that its upcoming Arrow Lake and Lunar Lake processors will multiply the AI performance capabilities. Now, uh, NPUs, things like that, neural processing units, um, this kind of new adventure in CPU design, they don't do a whole lot yet at the consumer level. We'll have to see how they evolve. It's really not something we can analyze right now. And generally speaking, for the vast majority of our audience, it is not something we recommend you even worry about or consider when making your purchasing decisions because the, the very likely scenario is it will not matter and by the time it does matter, you are probably upgrading or buying something different anyway. Um, but maybe something like Copilot will make use of these. Anyway, Intel had some claims. They said, quote, the Core Ultra platform delivers leadership AI performance today. They really like that word leadership. With our next generation platforms launching later this year, Lunar Lake and Arrow Lake triple the AI performance. In 2025, with Panther Lake, we'll grow AI performance up to an additional 2x. Providing more context for Intel's plans in general and CPUs, Gelsinger added this, quote, we are first in industry to have incorporated both gate all around and backside power delivery in a single process node. And backside power delivery is actually really interesting. We'll probably talk about that more later. The latter, unexpected, was two years ahead of our competition. Arrow Lake, our lead Intel 20 Angstrom vehicle, will launch this year. Intel 18 Angstrom is expected to achieve manufacturing readiness in second half 24, completing our five nodes in a four-year journey and bringing us back to process leadership. Gelsinger also said, quote, I am pleased to say that Clearwater Forest, our first Intel 18 Angstrom part for servers, has already gone into Fab and Panther Lake, for clients, we'll be heading into Fab shortly. And 20 Angstrom is a processing node that relates to Intel's new ribbon FET transistor architecture, 
which supplants FinFET, and Intel claims offers faster transistor switching speeds. Time will tell what actually comes of all of these claims for AI processing in especially the consumer market on the server side. It's definitely already a, a big thing. It's largely been dominated by NVIDIA GPUs, like the uh, Hopper series cards. And for AMD, the Epic CPUs are getting widespread use in machines that are doing all kinds of AI machine learning types of tasks. Either way, our hope here is that no one accidentally creates Skynet. And speaking of perfect transitions into stories, the new Terminator motherboard. That's the name. Maxon is launching this strange motherboard. It's called a YTX board. My first course of action, call Gordon Ma Un from PC World and ask him if this is what he wanted when he said it's time for ATX to go away and be replaced. Uh, because they're trying. It's, this is not an official form factor as far as we're aware. It looks like a thing Maxon is pushing. Kind of interesting though. So uh, this is called the Terminator H770YTX D5 Wi-Fi. And it looks like either the top half of an ATX board or a, a roided out ITX board or something. Maxon follows the typical design of a mini ITX board, but extends to the right until it hits the ATX right edge mounting points. Most GPUs these days are very long, so it's possible that Maxon figures that the motherboard might as well be just as long. This layout gives the advantage of extra board real estate for the chipset, I.O. connections, uh, M.2 devices, power delivery, and it does so without having to stack things up high like high-end ITX boards do today. The other unusual thing going on here is that most of the connectors are on the back side of the board, requiring use of a case that has the proper cutouts in the motherboard tray for cabling to pass through. As usual, the biggest challenge with a different size motherboard is just going to be case support. So for many ITX, the cases that support longer video cards won't necessarily have the clearance for the board itself, even though uh, the case is already that long. It depends where they put the power supply, and it won't have mounting holes for standard ATX mounting specifically on the right side, which is what it would need, or at least the top right. Micro ATX cases and full ATX cases will just have wasted space at the bottom, obviously. So it needs to be something for this, but uh, let us know if you are aware of any cases that are specifically a good fit for this form factor. You could just have spillover. There's definitely many ITX cases where uh, that board area could just be unsupported and spill past a cable management pass-through or something but we're not aware of any YTX designed cases or cases that could fit like a deep ITX type of board that's this specific size. Uh, if you are though, we'd like to get it in because I might buy that board to check it out. The Terminator H770 YTX D5 though is only available for JD at the time of writing this. It's 900 yuan, which is roughly 125 bucks. Up next, after 28 years, Microsoft is turning the page on WordPad. On September 1st, 2023, the company wrote on its deprecated features page that WordPad is no longer being updated and will be removed in a future release of Windows. We recommend Microsoft Word, I bet you do, or rich text documents like .doc and .rtf and Windows Notepad for plain text documents like .txt. So in 2023, that's when they said they would get rid of it, and now they are. They're delivering on their promise. Uh, unfortunately, Microsoft Word costs money. So that leaves few options for pre-installed, rich text format capable word processors. Notepad's great. Uh, it doesn't do quite the same things as WordPad. Uh, personally, I, I prefer it. But WordPad, if you want those features, you're either going to Google Docs like everyone else or download something open source maybe or free. Uh, word, though, is not, we don't think, a fair replacement because uh, Cost money. With the latest Windows 11 Insider preview build 26040, the change is rolling out. A more recent blog post published on January 26th adds, quote, as we mentioned with build 26020, WordPad is removed when doing a clean install and now is also removed on upgrades starting with this build. Unfortunately, upon hearing this news, we were at a loss for Word. WordPad debuted with the launch of Windows 95 and replaced Microsoft Write. The word processor's rich text format was lighter weight than Microsoft Word and often used as a quick note-taking application. So pour one out for WordPad. And now that Microsoft is in competition with Apple as the most valuable company in the world with a $3 trillion market cap, it simply can't afford to subsidize free typing software. 
That costs too much. Now if only Microsoft would commit to putting Clippy out of its misery. WordPad now joins a graveyard of other Microsoft Windows features, again, like, like Clippy, uh, out back. And Google Docs uh, probably has taken a lot of the market share for that. But it's nice to have a pre-installed, it's just their rich text format editor if you need it on a system that's maybe not internet connected uh, or something like that. But Unfortunately, this eliminates a, a standard pre-installed RTF internet disconnected option. All right, up next, story about layoffs in the tech and gaming industry. There's been a lot of them this past month. So 2024 has just begun, but 2023's trend of tech layoffs has persisted here. And this time it continues with Microsoft, which just spent tens of billions of dollars. It was about 70 billion on Activision Blizzard came now laying off 1,900 employees from Activision Blizzard. Maybe not unexpected. Some, there's going to be some job redundancy there with a merger, but uh, it looks like it's, it's probably a little more than that. They're also uh, getting rid of people from Xbox and Zenimax divisions as part of that 1,900 employee number. Uh, and then the Embracer Group has laid off 97 employees at its subsidiary studios, Eidos Montreal. In an internal memo obtained by The Verge, Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer wrote this, quote, It's been a little over three months since the Activision Blizzard and King teams joined Microsoft. As we move forward in 2024, the leadership of Microsoft Gaming and Activision Blizzard is committed to aligning on a strategy and an execution plan with a sustainable cost structure that'll support the whole of our growing business. Together, we've set priorities, identified areas of overlap, and ensured that we're all aligned on the best opportunities for growth. As part of this process, we've made the painful decision to reduce the size of our gaming workforce by approximately 1,900 roles out of the 22,000 people on our team. In conjunction with this news, Blizzard President Mike Ibarra announced that he is leaving, not being laid off. He's uh, Pursuing exciting new ventures. We're spending more time with his family. We'll find out next time. But he's leaving Blizzard and Microsoft. I mean, it makes he, former leadership. They probably want uh, to send a message, I guess. But Microsoft is instead installing Johanna uh, Ferries, who is most recently the general manager for Call of Duty, to fill the seat. Departing Microsoft and on the Eidos Montreal front, the company posted to Twitter slash X, writing, quote, the global economic context, oh boy, the challenges of our industry and the comprehensive restructuring announced by Embracer have finally impacted our studio. The difficult decision has been made to let go 97 people from the development teams, administration, and support services. In addition to the layoffs, games at both companies have reportedly been canceled. Microsoft Game Content and Studios President Matt Booty stated, quote, Blizzard is ending development on its survival game project and will be shifting some of the people working on it to one of several promising new projects Blizzard has in early stages of development. According to Bloomberg, the title was in development for roughly six years. Meanwhile, over at Eidos, Bloomberg also reports that the plug's been pulled on an unannounced Deus Ex game after roughly two years of development. Eidos Montreal's parent company, Embracer Group, went on a studio buying spree back in 2022, and the aftermath of those acquisitions has, at this point, been more abrasive than embrasive. They've, for example, uh, shuttered Free Radical Design's Volition, you may recognize from the Saints Row series, and laid off employees at Beamdog, Crystal Dynamics, and New World Interactive. Uh, naturally, many of the publicly traded entities facing layoffs in the past year have seen their stock price go up as a result of layoffs, showing uh, the blood-sucking nature of large investment capital in the short term, perhaps at the sacrifice of long term. Now, there's probably some redundancy with mergers and acquisitions, but uh, that's it's not all redundancy that we're looking at. Next one, Colorful, announces the Year of the Dragon-themed hardware, so Xinyan Kuai Le. Uh, this is commemorating Year of the Dragon, which is now, starting with uh, Lunar New Year, which is uh, basically right when this video goes up. And they are releasing a GeForce RTX 40 long edition of video cards, long being Dragon in Chinese, and that's limited to just this year. These cards are mostly white with some gold accents. The cards will cover the gamut of NVIDIA 4060 all the way up to the most recently announced 4080 Super. And we actually also spotted a 4090D, 4090 Dragon Edition. So it's the, it's the 4090 Dragon Edition, Dragon Edition. Perfect. It's the it's the classic double dragon video card. So the 4080 Super, the 4060, 4070, uh, four cards? Three cards. Three cards? Three 4070s, I think. And the 4090D 
second D have a dragon on them, so you can make sure your card is at least 5% faster. And if you're thinking that, wait a minute, won't they be hotter because dragons breathe fire? Fun fact, most Chinese dragons don't breathe fire and are instead associated with water. Unfortunately, this makes the cards tragically historically inaccurate. Not a single one of them is water-cooled. Disappointment, immeasurable, and our days ruined. The Lone Edition graphics cards come with a full cover backplate that showcases the Dragon design. These are three fan coolers that use a full three slot PCIe bracket, which we prefer to the two slot bracket on three slot cards. It adds structural support for modern heavy video cards and does actually help to stiffen the card in the slot. It's one of Nvidia's marketing points actually for the FE design over its <laughs> competitors, I guess, partners, AIB partners. The fin stack is oriented vertically on the Dragon Edition, so air will exhaust mostly into the case. Colorful has done well to ensure that the plastic shroud doesn't obstruct the fin exhaust path. Seems companies have finally learned on that. And the coolers shared online, like on video cards, also have a flow-through design. At least some of the cards have dual V BIOS as well. There's a rear OC button that can toggle between them. And the 40 Super variants will have a detachable iGames Smart LCD, they call it. Uh, so that you can monitor the GPU stats. They also come with a box of additional uh, future shelf-bound items, like a gold dragon coin. Uh, gold, not, not, I don't think it's actually gold. Uh, but they also have a Dragon Edition mouse pad, some red and gold home bow. In conjunction with those GPUs, Colorful is also launching the Z790D5 Dragon Edition motherboard. Supports Intel 14th gen and well everything else is the LGA 1700 supports. Mostly white and gold aesthetic for that. So <laughs> we'll see what the sales are like. Not really sure how well this uh, the Dragon series might do well in uh, China specifically, but the 40 series in general with the super refresh. We've heard some reports of better than expected sales at sort of the, the lower end of this. It seems like the 4070 super is the one people are most interested in, whereas at the top end here, it's hard to say what it's going to be. The 4080 Super's price drop definitely should help, but if you look around, uh, we had actually a number of you from Europe and in Germany especially tell us how a lot of the 4080 Super cards are a lot more expensive than uh, the MSRP should dictate. So we'll see how those do, but the 4070 Super seems to be the one that most people were interested in. Uh, and that's probably based on performance numbers. So that's it for news this week. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersaccess.net and use code STAP to help us out directly or you can go check out that AMD uh, STAPM video. It's pretty interesting stuff. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.